An educated illiterate. Let me help you understand what I really meant. Thousands of Tibetans starting accessing Twitter application towards the second half of this month. Reason? Samira Khan and her defamatory and derogatory tweets about the most loved person in this world, His Holiness the Dalai Lama. Her initial tweets accusing His Holiness the Great 14th Dalai Lama was copied from an article published by New York Times in December 1979 and another tweet was referred from an article published in the London-based news agency The Guardian. Now, based on the skill and positive credentials enjoyed by this news agency, anyone will think that the articles published in these papers are true. However, everyone fails to evaluate the credentials and motives of the people who contributes these articles to be published in these leading papers. And today, in this video, we are going to reveal the Beijing link of the two people who had contributed their articles to these news agencies. But first, Samira, the educated illiterate Khan, a naturalized American who originally is from Pakistan, the country which owes more money to China than it does to IMF. So naturally, China is the godfather of Pakistan. In 2018, her tweets on Joseph Stalin and his gulag made hundreds of thousands of people furious and ultimately Samira Khan, the former correspondent of Russian TV, had to apologize for her inaccurate and false tweets. We know now that her bad habit is still intact and she hasn't learned her lessons. Let's have a quick view on one of her tweets. The page that you are seeing on our screen now is from her Twitter post dated October 17th of this month. She cleverly highlights and has underlined few of the words which talks about human head, skulls, etc. Now, the important point here is to note the rest of the sentences which has not been underlined. This is an incomplete page that she was referring. Let me show you the exact page of the book. The page that she was referring is in page 357 of the book. The writer clearly talks about the painted walls and the painter. And moreover, the writer was entering into the temple. If anyone wants to read the book, it's an ebook which is free and I'll give the link in the description below. First of all, let's focus on the first two lines. And now focus on the word representation. This clearly indicates that it's a representation of or which looks like a flayed skin but it's not actually a human skin. Hence, the writer has used the word representation. Moving on to the next underlined sentence. She has intentionally disregarded the following words and sentence which states that the beating of a human skulls or decapitated heads were made out of wood and painted skillfully. The last few words underlined by her clearly indicates the details of paintings and Tibetan skulls like thangkas and mandalas which can be seen in any of the Tibetan monasteries. To all the readers and followers of her Twitter post, please be vigilant and do some self-analyze and research before believing in her or any of these will be idols. It's quite interesting to see how she has received help from pro-CCP activists. Can you imagine and really believe that a Pakistani origin lady digging into Tibetan history and reading entire articles published in the late last century? She should instead be digging into the history and geography of her homeland. Let's talk about the picture and the article posted on New York Times on December 9, 1979 and the same has been shared by Samira Khan on October 17, 2020. The article which was published on December 9, 1979 in New York Times was written by the photojournalist and the writer Audrey Topping while her husband Samuel Topping was working in New York Times as managing editor. Let me tell you about the Audrey Topping. Her father is a Canadian born in China. He was a missionary and a headmaster in a school in China. And the most interesting part is that her father is a personal friend of Zhao Enlai who was the first premier of CCP. Her father has also met Mao Zedong, the founder of CCP. Audrey studied Chinese from Nanking University. She enjoyed an unusual friendship with Zhao Enlai and other communist leaders. She and her husband Samuel Tropping are the only foreign journalists permitted to take photo inside Tibet. Let's talk about the article which was published in The Guardian on February 11, 2009. The article was written by the journalist Sorrel News. Sorrel News is a British journalist 
who has previously worked for the China Daily in Beijing, China Daily newspaper owned by the CCP government. Samira has also referred a page from Al Jazeera, out of which I don't see any reliable sources, but I would like to show you the controversial Al Jazeera. Oh my God, I cannot believe this is happening to us. I cannot believe this is happening to us. This is fake news targeted at us by a government. If there is one day I needed your support, it's today. Everyone knows Al Jazeera. It's one of the largest news organizations in the world. But people don't know that Al Jazeera is a government news organization, just like CCTV in China. Tibet was invaded by China in 1959, whereas the article was published in 1979. In these 20 years, CCP has manipulated everything inside Tibet in order to showcase the bad side of Tibet, using the journalist who has been the friend of communist China since 1891. All of you might have seen the pictures of skulls or skins she has posted. I'll be uploading the facts, the real truth in my next video. Do subscribe to this channel, click on the like button and hit the bell icon to receive notifications of my upcoming videos. Should you wish to learn and understand more about Tibet, its culture and tradition, please connect with any of your local Tibetan friends. They will be happy to enlighten you with the facts of and facts from Tibet. And a huge round of applause to all the friends and supporters of Tibet who genuinely understands the true situation in Tibet and has been voicing out for the voiceless Tibetans against the CCP regime.